Hello, this is Steven with a tutorial about how to connect a TFT display to the LEGO Mindstorms Inventor Hub or the Spike Prime Hub. This is a screen that you see here. Uh, it's a typical TFT screen. This is a 2.4 version and it uses an SPI uh, uh, serial bus to connect to the microcontroller. Of course you can't connect a screen like this straight to the uh, Lego Mindstorm because it doesn't have the correct interfaces. So that's the reason we developed some breakout boards to connect it to the LMS ESP32. And you see it, you can see that setup here on the table. So I have this TFT screen here, I have the LMS ESP32 over here, and we developed two small uh, breakout boards. So this is the first one which connects to the GPIO. Uh, connector on the LMS ESP32. We are using these uh, one millimeter pitch 10 uh, pins connectors because the cables that come with it they are quite flexible and they are quite small. If you would connect it with the with like DuPont cables you would end up with a very thick mass of cable. And we developed a second board, this is this one, which is a carrier board for the LCD display. And was basically what it does is the, the, the touch uh, connections and the TFT connections to break that out on this 10 pin um, connector. So if you look what we have here, uh, I connected the screen to the LMS ESP32 and we are using uh, So we are, this is the pinout of the LMS ESP32 and we are using these ports in this corner uh, to connect the TFT display. We don't use the, the, these three pins, the 33, 32 and 27, to use all the other ones. And we also take the power 3.3 volt and the ground of the same pins. So you, you basically don't lose any extra GPIO pins by connecting it. Now, uh, driving an, a TFT screen like this is quite cumbersome if you have to draw all the, the, the things from a GUI yourself. So if you have to draw your own lines and rectangles and text, it's quite cumbersome to, to make a GUI. And that's the reason that we uh, looked to the LVG, LVGL, so it's a light and versatile graphics library. So it's a library which runs on multiple microcontrollers also on ESP32 and moreover it also uh, is, is, has been ported to MicroPython so you can use it from a MicroPython environment you can use all the, the, the libraries uh, possibilities capabilities so just to get an impression uh, you have like uh, the widgets so for instance uh, a button widget that's the, the so th these are examples which now run in the browser but eventually of course will run on display so in this uh, documentation you have also the MicroPython code you have even a simulator so you can simulate before you implement it on your own on the board you can simulate it here so if I so now it's being simulated so I could change something here uh, demo run it again and you will see that it it changes immediately so you, for developing things this is very nice to do and of course we can um, use this code on the ESP32 so I started Tony that's the the interactive uh, MicroPython IDE and what we have to do first is to initialize the display and the touch and this is a code which you don't have to uh, you can use it as is you, you don't have to make any changes to this for this particular display the uh, what it does is it uses the the ps ram so that's uh, 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 an extra amount of four megabyte of ram which is connected to this to the spi bus to buffer the frame uh, the frames of this display and that's also the reason if you would uh, execute this twice without rebooting 
you will get some memory errors. So every time you initialize a display, you should reboot the uh, you should reboot the uh, the LMS ESP32. So what you can do is just start this on on the LMS ESP32. I copy this here, and now I've initialized the screen, and you won't see. Uh, you won't see a lot of things happening. You will see that the display is still blank. But now I can use one of these examples that I have here, for instance, this one. So I could go back to the documentation page here. And I could look at the MicroPython code and I could paste this into my. Uh, so I do make a new one. So I could just paste this and you will see oh, there's some error. Okay, so this is not supported. It, it depends because uh, this LVGL, it has several versions and not all the versions have exactly the same options. So probably uh, by doing this, it will be okay. So if you now look a little bit more in detail, you can see that I have now two buttons on the display, just the one button, which is just uh, a normal button. And this is a toggle button, which turns red or blue every time you click it. So this is a very easy thing to do. So you, you don't have to bother about how this uh, rectangle is being drawn or the text. You just uh, look at the buttons and, and the, the labels, and that's everything you need to do. So as an example, I would like to show you how to connect this display to the uh, LEGO Mindstorms. And as a small demo, we will be using this motor. And we will show a dial on the, on the screen, which uh, uh, gives you the position of the motor. So before doing that, I will show you a little bit how you can uh, do this interactively. So I rebooted it because otherwise I get this error. And now I can again initialize the display. And now I can, I'll show you uh, the, the program. Now I can draw an arc. An arc is basically a dial which you can set to the specific version. I can show you that here. So if you look here at arc and look at the example, so this is a typical arc. So this is a fancy one, which has like a percentage. What we will do is just draw a basic one, which is also completely round, 360 degrees. And that's, that's done by these commands. So I will copy them here, which is in a new window. So. So let's see, I, this is the, this, the current screen. So all the, the widgets are inherited from this current screen. So I first have to do this. And you will see, if I, I probably you will see already that something appears on the screen. I can show you a little bit more detail. So you see here the arc already drawn, but it's, it has like the default sizes. So if I now say, okay, I want to have the range of 0 to 360 and I want to have it completely round I can do the, both commands and now I still have to set the size and I have to align it in the middle so that's being done by this and now you will see oh, now you will see that it's in the middle of the screen and I can change the value and that will change the dial here so if I set the value do for instance 100 you will see that the dial changes so here I can now change the value while looking at it like 200 so this way I can easily change the value so another thing I can could do is to use a, a linear slider so this is done by this code so the slider also inherits from the, the current screen. 
so now it's still not being it's probably somewhere in the corner so you won't see it i can set the width of the slider and i can align it to position it on the correct place in the screen and now i can set the range between 0 and 360 and now you will see the slider as well here and i can change the value of the slider for instance 200 or 100 so this changes the, the value so what i would like to do now is to uh, read out the position of the motor and communicate that to the lms esp32 and then show that on the dial and on the slider so let's see how that works so we have now both sliders the slider and the arc what i need to do is uh, i can use the urit remote like this and I, I, I connect the the ESP32 to port A. So I will need, I'll show you the, the program. I will need to, uh, okay, first I, I initialize on the ESP32, the UART remote. Oh. Copying doesn't work properly, so like this. And now I can make like a, a function that sets the value of the arc and sets the value of the slider depending on the angle I give it. So we can try that. So if I know it's show angle 100, you will see that, that both the indicators change. Okay. So now I can add that this command to the UART remote and start a loop. So now it's waiting for com a command which is called show angle. So if I now go over to the ESP32, I can again here import. I have to import the your remote library like this, and now I can initialize it on port A. And now I can set send a command call. And the command is show angle. And I use the wrapper representation of the variable and I use, for instance, 100. What's wrong with this? Oh, actually, I used a different, the wrong, the wrong quote. Oh. Like this. So now if I, zoom in a little bit on the table you will see that if i use different va different values here so 0 50 i can uh, define the the position from the uh, uh, the lego hub so now i make a small program so this is the program on the hub so i i initialize the root remote i initialize the motor motor B, that's the motor which, which is connected. I set it to absolute position and I can read out the motor uh, position. And this M value it will be sent to the uh, to the US remote callback function. So if I, if I use this program, so now it's waiting for me to, to so I will zoom in on the table again. If I now turn this this motor, you will see that the both indicators will change accordingly. If I go past 360, it's reset to zero again. It's very responsive and it's very easy. Just it's just a few lines of, of code to do this kind of sophisticated things. Um, this is about the tutorial I would like to to do that today and i hope you find it useful maybe just one addition that's these breakout boards this one and this one and also the smd connected uh, header uh, and the cable will be available uh, soon in the web shop so you can order them there you will 
have to buy an LCD display like this yourselves. Uh, take care about that it's a touch uh, display and you can see the difference by this, this chip here. In some displays this chip is not mounted and it won't have any touch capabilities. Another indication is this, uh, these small contacts here which is the connection to the resistance uh, touch uh, overlay. So this is the screen you should buy. I will set some links in the description and I hope you find it useful. Bye.